the entrance antiphon. The Lord and ruler will be coming soon, and his name will be called Emmanuel, because he will be God with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ, and communion with the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. Brothers, sisters, we come uh, to celebrate sacred mysteries and to continue our Advent practices. In these final days of the season of Advent, we ask God to make sure our hearts are open to all the graces of this special season, especially as the day of Christ's birth comes closer. Lord Jesus, you came offering pardon and peace to us sinners. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come sharing with us your power to love one another as you have loved us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh Lord, in your kindness, hear the prayers of your people, so that those who rejoice at the coming of your only begotten Son in our flesh may, when at last he comes in glory, Gain the reward of everlasting life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover. Here he comes, springtime, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My lover speaks, he says to me, Arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time for pruning, the vines has come, and the song of the dove is heard in our land. The fig trees put forth its figs, and the vines in bloom give forth fragrance. Arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff. Let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and you are lovely. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial Psalm. Exalt you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Exalt you just, just in the Lord. Lord. Sing, Sing to, to him, him a, a new song. song. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. Exalt, Exalt you just in the Lord. Sing, sing to, to him, him a new, new song. song. But the plan of the Lord stands forever. The design of his heart through all generation. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. 
exalt you just to the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice. In his holy name we trust. Exalt you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. O Emmanuel, our King and Giver of Law, come to save us. Lord our God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out in those days and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, Our first reading, the Canticle of Canticles, or the Song of Songs, is a love song. Um, um, It's a dialogue between two young Jewish uh, people who seem like they're deeply in love. Why is that in the Bible? Um, Some say because it was good literature, good poetry, and it is beautiful. Listen, arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of pruning the vines has come, and the song of the dove is heard on our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines, in bloom, give forth fragrance. Arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come. Um, It's a beautiful statement of this young man's love for uh, maybe his fiancée. But it's probably in the Jewish Bible because they said the love between a man and a woman, engaged couple or married couple, is meant to be a reflection of God's love for his people. Uh, And this is a testimony to that. It's an allegory of God's love for the people of Israel. That was uh, a theme spoken with some regularity in the Old Testament. For example, uh, Hosea, minor prophet, his wife, Gomer, was not faithful to him. She'd run off when a caravan would go through their town. But she'd come back and want to be reinstated. And this happened several times. And I think the third time she came back and asked for forgiveness, Hosea says he takes it to God. You have to be careful when you do that. Take my, your decision to God. He said, what should I do with her? Should I forgive her and bring her back as my wife? Or should I throw her out? And the Lord says, you take her back, 
just as I have forgiven Israel their infidelities again and again and again, so <clears throat> you must forgive your wife, Gomer. <clears throat> and the church in the Christian dispensation teaches, teaches takes this <clears throat> source of revelation and grace <clears throat> based on the love of a man and a wife to a new dimension. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he tells Christian couples, your love for each other should reflect Christ's love for the church. But then in addition to that, he says, and this is a sacrament. A sacrament is a sign that signifies what God is doing, but it also causes it to take place. And he's saying in Christian marriage, husband and wife's love for each other not only reflects Christ's love, but brings Christ's love to the other. The husband, in loving his wife, brings Christ's love to her. And the wife, in loving her husband, brings Christ's love to him. Uh, it's, it's a powerful statement uh, of, of, this, of this sacrament. In, in our gospel, um, we have yesterday's gospel and today's gospel. In, and we have, from those two gospels, the first two sentences of the Hail Mary. Yesterday, when Gabriel appeared to Mary, he said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And today in the gospel, <clears throat> Elizabeth says to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Um, on the Feast of Immaculate Conception, then and again uh, yesterday, if, if you just take that salutation to Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, uh, and then say, what? Well, in addition, what could that mean for this beautiful woman that God created to be the mother of the Redeemer? Hail Mary, um, full of love, full of patience, full of forgiveness, full of faith, full of encouragement, full of trust and hope, full of joy, full of gentleness, all qualities for Mary, the mother of Jesus. And uh, I just thought I'd show something a little bit personal with you as Advent comes to a, an end. I always think that in the Advent season, if we look, there will be a scripture that speaks powerfully to us, and there were several. One of them, uh, I think it was, but it was in the breviary that I, it hit me, the, the, the Lord delights in you. And that phrase, the Lord delights in you, and he delights in you. Um, I, I, I think I was a seminarian, and my spiritual advisor was the priest in my hometown, head of the school, and also a pastor. Um, and I suffered from perfectionism. If it's not perfect, it's awful. If it doesn't turn out just right, then it isn't any good at all. And I applied that to myself as, a, as one trying to pursue Christian perfection. And he said, you beat yourself up to the point, Roger, that it, it's almost like self-hatred. And so to counter that, he would affirm me. He would point out good qualities in me which made me, I, I wasn't able to accept them. And then one time he used this phrase, Roger, the Lord delights in you. Oh, I said, that's the craziest thing I ever heard in your life. How could the Lord delight in a schmuck like me? Why don't stop saying those things? He, he said, it's, I'm simply quoting the scripture as the Lord speaks to you. The Lord delights in you. So I want you to say 15 times every morning, the Lord delights in me. It was a, it was a good practice, and um, uh, 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 again, I did that. So 
most of us are pretty quick to note our faults and criticize ourselves for all the ways in which we fail. But we ought to hear the Lord saying, I delight in you. The prophet is right. The Lord does delight in you. The Lord be with you. As we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ, we offer our prayers with confidence for the church. May the church be light and splendor for the world. We pray to the Lord. For our world during these Advent Christmas seasons, may the Spirit of Christ help to unite all people. We pray to the Lord. For those who have suffered loss during this Advent season, and for people for whom celebrating these holidays can be difficult, we pray to the Lord. For this Eucharistic assembly, may God's grace help us to keep the Eucharist at the center of our lives, we pray to the Lord. For all members of your family, may God bless them and protect them from every evil, we pray to the Lord. And for your personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. And finally, we pray for our beloved dead, your deceased family members and loved ones, for the deceased members of our parish, and in a special way for Pat Pitts and Monsignor Augustine. May they rejoice forever with the angels and saints enjoying the riches of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. We say this through Christ Jesus, your Son. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share more fully in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. <coughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O oh Lord, be pleased to accept the offerings of your people, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his birth, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. Joining now with angels and saints, <clears throat> we too sing a hymn to your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, <clears throat> holy, <clears throat> Lord God of hosts. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and pro <coughs> <coughs> therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may all be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Walker, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, all of God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Lord's command, formed by his teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of Christ be with each one of you. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion at the pond. Blessed are you have, who have believed that what is was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh Lord, may our participation in these sacred mysteries provide endure, enduring protection for your people, so that being subject to your glorious majesty and dedicated service, we may know abundant health in mind and body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Our Mass is ended.